Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. In this video I'm painting the Demos Predator in the Horus Heresy Death Guard colour scheme. I'd kind of finished the army but I couldn't resist a traditional spoon lead predator built here as you can see in the very old school or las cannon format. Didn't want to start painting before I did a little bit of customization. If you've watched a few of the other videos relating to the uh, Horus Heresy Death Guards, you'll know I've made some blue stuff molds of kind of the shoulder symbols for the Death Guard, and also I've cast up pieces off one of the Forge World Dreadnoughts for some sort of unit markings and things. So the first stage was getting those ready and prepped. Did a little bit more cutting down than I did if you've seen the previous videos to thin these symbols out because they were going on a flat panel and they've got a natural curvature in them because these were meant to be shoulder pads. So a little bit of trimming down to get it so it'll sit nicely onto the onto the armor because originally i was going to stick it on the flat panels in the end i changed my mind and stuck it onto the turret which you'll see later sliced out the uh, mold of the 14 symbol for the legion and then just used a bit of super glue and glued these onto the relevant sort of parts i didn't want to go mad for tons and tons of symbols all over it i wanted to keep it reasonably plain but just with that bit of difference now you can see here uh, undercoated with a black and then with a lead belcher love undercoated metallics i won't go on it again i talk about it in all my videos and then it's starting off with the metallic stage and doing the brass across the model. Now if you look around the Death Guard symbol there, you will see quite a lot of bumps and lumps around it. And that's because I messed up the placement of this symbol three or four times while I was doing it. I was going to then file it down and get it smooth again, like you can see the right hand side symbol I've got there. But I thought, you know what, once I've painted and things, it might resemble a little battle damage or whatever. And you can see at the end, it actually works quite nicely for the fact that Death Guard vehicles do tend to get a bit battered through the campaign. So. You know, I did mess up the placement, but don't worry too much about that if you do the same. If you were doing that for a pristine and clean force you were doing, you would want to probably file that down, but I didn't feel the need for it because it's Death Guard and this is going to look a bit manky in the end. Now it's starting to lay down the colours. So the first colour going is for that off-white colour. It's exactly the same colour scheme I've done for the rest of my Death Guard, so if you've watched those videos, you know, this will be kind of a repetition of that scheme. But just to note, on a large flat panel vehicle like this, you saw me there do a couple of layers of that off-white colour. So I've gone through, I'm not being too precious about leaving bits of the silver showing because that'll represent battle damage and things, but I do want a fairly good layer. Now the first layer was sort of putting the base coat down, the second layer I'm focusing on the flat panels and the areas where the, the light would hit the model just so it's going to help when I put the washes over later and uh, just to build that depth. So I'm not going that second layer into the cracks and gaps and things, so just sort of want to note there. Now it's about sort of the alternate colours or the, the pops of detail you might want to do there. A little bit of blacks around the last cannon barrels, bits of blue onto the cables. Again, echoing the colour scheme that I've used on my Death Guard previously. So not mountains and mountains of detail, but just enough to make it pop. A bit of red into the missiles there. So why have I gone for the configuration that I have? And I did speak on a previous video that this army is basically done. Well, look, the Predator, it's an absolute classic. One of the very first vehicles I ever bought when I got into 40k far too many years ago so i just could not resist sliding this into the army points wise it's going to fit i will do an army reveal video probably next week i'll show it through just to uh, show you what the full 2000 kind of points is so you know watch out for that one so i couldn't resist it went for all las cannons that's the classic loadout didn't do any magnetization or anything like that though so just built as it is now you just saw me flick past some of the other colors there a bit of yellow into the lenses of the lights now it's onto the death guard green now what i would recommend though is plan ahead for where you're going to put the Death Guard green detail pieces because it was definitely more difficult painting this over that white undercoat than it would have been going straight over the silver. Had to do a couple of layers and also it means you can't do the battle damage as easily because you can't leave stuff showing through because you'd leave the white showing through. They saw there also I made a couple of mistakes when I was painting that green on but just quickly cleaned it up so I do try to leave my mistakes in my videos sometimes. Now it's the Vallejo game wash stage so a dirty sepia wash all over this model really helps it's one of my favorite washes i do a lot of my models sort of not quite full grim dark but a lot dirtier than you will see the kind of you know workshop traditional scheme now it's going back over the model with exactly the same colors i paint for wet palette so this paint is very very thinned down anyway but if you don't do that just water the paint down probably 50 50 and you are almost putting the glaze on you can see how far across the model that one paintbrush full of paint is going so you're spreading it thin the style I'm going for is to try and have some of that kind of grime and muck showing through so it almost looks a bit streaky, a bit dirty, but whatever. Obviously on camera it's hard to show up so I was trying to use the uh, paintbrush there to get it to kind of show. Now going on super speed again, just showing you how far you want to spread that paint, how thin it's being put across so it's almost halfway between the glaze and halfway between kind of normal painting and spreading that paint 
really around because you for me i want to see the uh, the dirty effect not going into the gaps and cracks leaving that kind of wash layer into the gaps and cracks so it looks like you've got a multi-toned effect and as i start on the death card green layer hopefully you can see that on the rest of the white it is a terribly difficult color to video so um you know i'm only doing this on an iphone so don't uh, you know diss me for that but it is a hard colour to do, but we're looking for those gradations when we're painting it. And the same principle goes on to the Death Guard green panels. You put in that almost a wash across this model here to slowly build up the colour. So you can see a couple of streaks there that I'm painting over, but you can still kind of see them through the green. You might want to put another layer, two, three layers if you want. Uh, it depends on how much of that streakiness you're happy to see through, but I quite like it. Now it's finishing off those other details little bits of red onto the missiles and things if you've seen there and a really useful thing here if you look on the um, lenses I suppose you'd call it around the cupola I've caught that with a little bit of the white layer just in that top corner worked out really well because that's now where I'm going to put that blue and then automatically you've got two or three colors almost showing on there you know the where we've caught it with the white layer or the uh, flesh color that actually is we're using it kind of pops a bit higher then into the flat area and then into the recess where the wash has gone. So you're almost showing three colors on there. Now I don't actually put any more yellow on. What I'm doing here is a very thin brush, take, taking some gunmetal color, just covering the grills over the headlights there, not touching the yellow at all. And then going around with that uh, gunmetal and just cleaning up any patches where I've gone onto the metallic colors that I want to cover up. I don't highlight all the metallics. You can see here the wash has gone on really nicely on the metallics. It really works for that. It's more difficult to use the wash on the pale colors going round again with the black, the blue, and just touching up those other area details. Now it's the part that uh, takes a while, <laughs> skinny brush, using that brass colour that we used earlier to go for all the rivets across the model, and there are a lot of rivets on this. Now, you don't have to do the rivets on the silver parts, I didn't on all of them, but it's just really doing something to break up the sort of flat um, monotony of the panels, if that makes sense. It just gives that bit of detail, makes a lot you put a little bit more effort in, now I do make a mistake here again, some of that uh, brass colour goes onto the flat of the model. Wash the paint off into the water and then scrub it off that kind of flat area that you've managed to drop it onto. So you can see again, uh, I know I've mentioned it before, but you can see the multi-colours and tones coming from underneath that wash uh, stage. Now you will notice later on the last section I show, the final pictures, or the first pictures you've seen at the very beginning of the video, is actually after it's been varnished. So some of the kind of blends that are coming through on the panels will dull down a little bit once you've varnished it. I always varnish my models because generally I think of these as gaming pieces as well as just presentation pieces. Now it's a super quick way of doing burnt exhaust onto the uh, exhaust here. So we're taking first Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a workshop shade colour, covering three quarters or a little bit more of the exhaust in a good layer, not too much, you don't want it pooling too much so it's going to run down. Top three quarters let that to dry. Once that's dry, we're then taking Druki Violet and covering 50% of that exhaust. Similar process, you don't want to put too much on there um, because if it goes too far down, you may as well just not have bothered doing the Drakenhof Nightshade, but covering about half. And then once this is then thoroughly dried, you take the next stage, which is then going into a Null Oil, and you do the Null Oil just on the very, very kind of top quarter. And those kind of three washes, on top of the fact that there's been a, a dirty wash over the brass effect or the retributor armor as it actually is, um, will then make it look like a real nice burnt effect exhaust. You can do exactly the same technique uh, for melter guns and those kind of pieces, but I just thought I'd show that and focus and highlight on that because again, most of the rest of this painting has been very similar to how I've done the rest of the Death Guard. So there we are looking at that kind of finished effect. All the washes have dried, quite happy with how all this looks. And just giving you another focus on what those armor panels do look like and from this point, I did a uh, Munitor varnish, which is a workshop kind of matte style varnish. It's the same varnish I always use, and it will then show you what the final kind of paintwork looks like, because it does alter slightly once it's been varnished. So there we go, this is the last piece of my Horus Heresy Death Guard army. I hope you like the video. There will be an army reveal coming up soon, so like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. Check all that out, and I will see you on another video.